it was gonna bite me. <laughs> and then it just started tickling me. I still get goosebumps. Maybe they only see each, year, each other here once a year and you get a chance to play with your friends. Those old friends have gathered in Battleground for 32 years now, greeting each other each year with the sounds of fiddles and banjo. And for three days in June, everyone has something in common. People come here and uh, when you get... Being on the back of a motorbike is such a great way to see the city. We got to ride around the city, the countryside, and constantly my head is on a swivel trying to take everything in. Of course, we stopped at a bunch of sites and had some relaxing time to poke around, but a really big part of the adventure is just being on the back of that bike and getting to really experience the city and the countryside of Quay. I know as a football coach, I uh, hesitate uh, to maybe uh, question an official or get on a, a football official. Partly because Coach Hay trusts them. You know, most of the time, it, it is going to be right. Partly because he can relate. Good luck, guys! It's giving me a better perspective, especially for the officials. Coach Hay is also referee Hay. Two. His transition during the winter from outside the lines to inside has helped him develop as a coach. I understand now the uh, the game better. You know, it's kind of like the coach coaching his players. Uh, you got to have poise. You got to know the rules. Uh, you got to handle people in the right way. It's kind of hard to understand why somebody would want to get into this profession. Referees are about as popular as lawyers. You know, we do take uh, you know kind of a verbal beating out on the floor occasionally every now and then. But Hay has become popular with coaches because he's willing to admit that sometimes the man making the call drops the ball. I'm not afraid to tell a coach that, hey, if I missed it or, you know, you didn't see it the way I did, then maybe I did miss it. You can, you can feel the vibration. A wonderful noise, uh, the smell, the, the sound. What's that roar of the engine sound like to you? Oh, man. And Fortress 63 Zulu is ready for takeoff. 2 3. Fortress 9563 Zulu Live in Tower Full Length Crew cleared for takeoff. The B 17 represents all that's good about America. And for the next couple of days, you've got the chance to get up close and personal with a very rare piece of history. The B 17 is probably the most famous airplane in the world. Uh, there were 12,731 of them built, and there's only 13 left flying in the world.
on the bright side of that, it opened up an opportunity with baseball. Two years after dropping baseball, Richard is now trying to finish something he never got started. As a parent, you're just every pitch, you're just hoping it is good and he does well. And it's just like every pitch you're a little nervous and upset about. The Richard family, along with Jake Burton, his high school baseball coach, and his family have traveled to the University of Illinois to see Clayton pitch. But they're not the only ones watching, wondering if he can still throw. The scouts are scribbling. Clayton doesn't care. Any idea what you what you clock out at? No, don't pay attention to that stuff. That's not going to help me right now. Ball. It's not going to help me right now. Richard may not care, but the scouts and the big league teams care. And as far as his coaches are concerned, the verdict is in. When you throw from the left side anywhere 90, 92 miles an hour, that's something special, and you don't see that every day. I looked up, and there was the top off of the courthouse. And the top of the courthouse looked just like a steel ball with the beams twisted. The courthouse looked uh, as if a bomb had hit it. I mean, it was devastated. But it wasn't just the courthouse. Oh, the entire city. The entire city, all areas of the city, had some damage. The devastation just shocks you. It was totally overwhelming. You had to be here, you had to see it, you had to witness it. Everybody was just um, in a stunned state of mind, trying to help one another. We had no communication, no radio, uh, no telephones. You just wonder why. Why did this happen? Why did it happen here?